it's got that cool music. It's some sort of jungle rumble music on YouTube. Because YouTube, we have all these free songs yeah. you can use. So, uh, yeah, this is good. And add a title. I've added the title. Yay. So yeah, new laptop, streaming from a new thing. Got the light set up here, which is great. So we're up in the game. Hopefully less technical difficulties. Yes, well there won't be any like major crashing as far as I know. There won't be like, it won't just die. Yeah. Which is good. We don't want to just die. Um, yes, so give me a second here. Custom, add new destination. So yeah, today we're talking about terrain, which is great. Yeah, um, uh, lots of lots of games have been coming out recently that are going to be very terrain heavy. Mm -hmm. So it's a great time to like kind of cover it and talk about it. And I need to learn about some of it. I know some, yeah, but I need to know I need to know more details. There's a whole lot. It's great, isn't it? Um, yeah, no, it absolutely is. Um, so we'll go through and we'll break down like what each terrain each company kind of does. Uh, the pros and cons of each one mm -hmm. um, and what is most effective for each game. So like sometimes something's really great for a particular game but requires a different method of painting than the miniatures for that game requires. It's uh, it's interesting um, but to me it's like really fascinating and like to me <laughs> having a pretty game is is one of a, one of the important features of actually like gaming itself. I know. never even like really grokked that until the new Kill Team stuff came out yeah. because the fact that it's a small scale and the new we had the tr at the store we have what eight full shells of terrain. So we have we've already had we're spoiled here. We have yeah. beautiful terrain. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, but to have your own terrain that you can bring to the store, mm -hmm. uh, like last night we had Ricky with Necromunda, new Cotter gang. Yeah. Boom. Uh, it was amazing to see that um, that custom terrain that they brought. Yeah, they had, they had some here, but I think they brought a couple of things of terrain. And it's 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 really important to know, especially for like Games Workshop is itself is doing a really good job about making terrain important for mm -hmm. all their games and giving you a reason why you should own this terrain as opposed to like, you know, having the store own it, right? And we are live on Facebook. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, everybody. We're going to do our intro splash because this thing is cool. Check this out. Yeah, and so... <laughs> and we're back. How cool is that? This is very cool. So, uh, we were just talking on YouTube because we're always live there first right before we are on Facebook. Yeah. Um, so you can always catch us there for the, the, the pre-warm-up. Yeah. Uh, about the awesomeness of terrain. Yeah. And as John said... The fact that all of these new games are coming out that are heavily featuring terrain is correct. Awesome. Yeah. So, like, it's one of those things that you want to take a look at, and I think a lot of companies are finally getting the idea that terrain matters, mm -hmm. um, because it's the great way to show off your game and yes. really kind of like highlight what you've put into the models by giving it a great feature to to look at. So, uh, terrain has built up in the last couple of years um, through a couple of different processes. Um, one, the traditional injection mold plastics that Games Workshop has done. Um, MDF laser cut terrain. Yes. Um, then we also have, uh, yeah. no, that's uh, that's actually a plastic card Yeah, that terrain. is the plastic. I was thinking um, of this one. Yeah, yeah. So I MDF laser cut, the plastic card, the injection mold plastic, um, resin pieces of terrain. Um, there's so many different varieties and uh, features to it, and it just keeps growing. Terrain in itself is taking over a bit of our store, like in our hobby section alone. Mm -hmm. We have more terrain than we've ever had in, in our past years, and we're stocking it because not only is there demand, but... Uh, the games themselves like really want to push it and we think our customers and all that will appreciate the the more frequent terrain and the fact that like I can now make a themed army like let's say I'm doing gremlins for Malifaux mm -hmm. um, they want to have the swamp boards I can now buy um, pre-painted plastic card pieces of terrain that are like mm. bayou docks and all that sort of stuff Heck yes. so even though we at Gigabytes may not have that on the shelf I can make sure whenever I play a game, I can give myself that nice thematic edge to it by by owning this terrain ourselves. But um, awesome. yeah, 
so Kill Team is kind of the the big thing or the the big game that's pushing new terrain from Games Workshop. Right. Um, and so we should probably talk about that first. Um, yeah. What? So, that's the one? Yes. Here yeah. we go. So Kill Team. <laughs> Kill Team in itself is uh, a very terrain heavy game because it's a small squadron base. They want to give you a big tactical ed edge over uh, or with your models in terms of like blocking line of sight, giving you something to interact with and move around. So they designed these new cityscape ruins, which are so good. Um, they're less industrial than the other Games Workshop mm -hmm. ones and a little bit more gothic. So it's a new style of terrain uh, coming out from them. And it's really great because they're very modular with how they build and paint, uh, or very modular with how they build. Um, and you can also paint them kind of however you feel like. You can right. make it look like a monastery, like what they usually show in the box art. Box art. You can really make it look like a war-torn city, do a lot of weathering, go more of like this like heavy gray kind of look. Um, and the way that they have this one, like for someone like me who doesn't, I've never really painted terrain before, super easy to take a rattle can and just go Yeah, to yeah, town, yeah. Right? Um, so with, with the color scheme on there, it's basically you spray with Incubi Darkness, mm. um, do a little bit of dry brushing and washing, and then mm -hmm. come in and paint the gold features. Right. Um, it's really easy to get that sort of stuff going. Um, now, of course, this is like yeah. super high end. If you're like, I have to make sure every single piece of my terrain is perfection. Right. You and can totally do that. Yeah, and a lot of times you can come in with like a rattle can, like picking up a gray or a dust color, um, mm. like a nice like sand thing. Once again, spray it, wash it, call it a day. Mm. Um, it, the Games Workshop terrain is probably going to be the most friendly for uh, mm -hmm. newer hobbyists uh, because it is that injection plastic. So. Um, it's fairly easy to put together. You don't really have to um, like pin any pieces together or do any sort of different like modeling methods that mm -hmm. you wouldn't already know how to do for your miniatures. So for someone who's new into terrain, I always will point them over to the injection plastic style terrain, which is going to be Games Workshop. Right. Um, so they have a lot of pieces for fantasy. They have a lot of pieces. The pieces for 40k keep growing. Yeah. So um, most of it's going to be like that imperial style city terrain. Um, but they've been branching out into, oops, oh, sorry, like warehouses, uh, alien planets, uh, industrial uh, style terrain, like this stuff here. It's which, so cool. Which is yep, really perfect. cool. Um, and heavy. <laughs> yeah, it is heavy. But it starts giving you like cranes and uh -huh. like cargo boxes and all that sort of stuff. So not only will it work for 40K, but it can also be translated over to a lot of other game systems mm -hmm. because it... You know, nothing in there necessarily like screams super sci-fi. Like right. maybe a little futuristic, but not not enough to like take you away from like a modern day setting mm -hmm. or really any other worlds in itself, just because of the styling of it. Um, other injection plastic terrain would be from Mantic. They have yeah. those modular ones. Mm -hmm. um, they're not necessarily as pretty as Games Workshop, but they are much, much, much more like modular. So you mm -hmm. can kind of build exactly what you want. It's like. Um, taking those like old connect pieces. I don't yes. know if you played with those. Oh yeah. But definitely. it's like using that and you can really kind of make whatever you want out of it. Um, it just takes a little bit more imagination and fiddling with it to to get something as like pretty or um, complex as a Games Workshop piece. But like I said, it's a lot more modular. Now um, they've even made the new GW stuff, is, they've made it with the purpose of being more modular, right? So yes, when, yeah. when you get the kill team starter, you can stack those how you want exactly right. um so you can make a bunch of little smaller pieces to really fill up a board mm -hmm. or you can make a couple like really impressive like uh pieces in itself set pieces yes <laughs> uh so it, it's really up to you and it's also like one of those benefits where you know if you buy the kill team box set and then you want to buy another piece like a box of terrain mm -hmm. um, like this that we just showed off you totally can and you can have two different like two wildly different pieces of terrain from it Cool. Um, and the reason why we push all this is because it follows all of the same principles that you would need to build and paint your regular miniatures, mm -hmm. which to me is really good because like as a new hobbyist or someone who doesn't necessarily want to put a lot of like thought process into it, mm -hmm. it's the easiest to get into and go form it. Nice. So you um, don't need an airbrush if you want to do this. Correct. Thing. Yeah, yeah. So if you didn't want a rattle can, let's say you wanted to paint it, mm -hmm. how would you would you go about? Would you just get the biggest brush you could get and just Yeah, so so we do carry several large brushes mm -hmm. and that's just gonna save you a lot of time. Um, as always, like when you are painting like large surfaces like this, it's really important to not dip the brush in the pot, but actually set the paint outside, thin it down, and make sure that your brush is doing that. Because 
when you paint terrain like this on the scale, um, the, the thought is like, I need to do this as quickly as possible. So I'm just going to take my big brush, dip it in the pot and just start slathering it. Right. That'll lead to a lot of streaking or pink clumps in areas. And you okay. don't want that. That's like when you're painting your wall at your house. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so you want to take a little bit of the paint outside of the pot, make sure it's thin enough to where it applies without giving that like brush stroke effect and then uh, let it dry. It might take you a couple coats, but okay. at the same point, like. What I would recommend doing, painting in sections, like right. paint like a piece uh, of a wall at a time. Uh, so you're not like stressing yourself out and also prevents um, you from smudging the piece as you're like moving the piece of terrain around. Right. Cause you can't really like mount that thing on like a paint handle, right? <laughs> you know, so. Can you so, imagine? <laughs> You have to like four of them yeah, and like put them in a little quadrant. Um, if you have questions, please ask because yeah. there's all kinds of questions that I have already that I'm going to keep on yeah. asking. But so, if you also have questions, please message in the comments as well. Um, so what are like the easiest colors to put on uh, onto like a big brush strokes? Like for instance, I tried red and red's tough to put yeah, on, no, like, on top of black. You know? Red's, red's going to be tough. So generally what you're going to do is you're going to stick to like uh, neutral tones, so like grays and browns and things like that. And these make great undercoats for other colors. So okay. like, if you're like, hey, I want to make a red building, mm -hmm. um, you might want to either prime brown itself or use a brown red, uh, like a reddish brown okay. undercoat, and red will apply more easily over that brown right. than it would so on the black. Um, Interesting. Okay, good to know. So, so brown undercoat. Yeah. So okay. a brown undercoat for red would work well. Um, same with like if you wanted to do golds. Um, mm -hmm. Like a lot of times, uh, there's two schools of thought. Like if you want the gold to not be as lustrous, do a brown undercoat. Uh, Cause gold in itself has a lot of warm tones and things mm -hmm. like that. So when it's placed over the brown, the brown helps the coverage with it. Cool. Um, now, if you wanted a nice bright lustrous gold, you hit silver with it first. Silver applies very easily over black and then gold goes over uh, silver very, very well. So. Um, once again, uh, that would make for a really good uh, shining kind of thing. So it depends that's on how cool. pristine you okay. want to do. Um, so that actually also applies to like things like uh, Stormcast. Oh yeah, absolutely. So if I want to do Stormcast, yeah. if I want to do Gold Stormcast, which is just traditional, you know, you know, bros. It, if you want to do Gold Stormcast, I will always say this: just th spend the extra money, buy a can of Retributor armor, yep. call just it a day, <laughs> call it a day. Done. But if for some reason you don't have access to it or you're like, I don't need to buy a $25 can of primer. Maybe you're doing non-metal metals? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. start with browns. Uh, okay. And like, so I usually use a lot of browns for like the trim that I'm doing. Like, okay. so if I, if I have a lot of gold trim on something, I'll paint it brown first mm. and then I'll paint the gold over it. Um, so it, it just speeds things up. The and genius of John Galvin. This is, so this, I will say a lot of this isn't me just figuring it out, it's me learning from others and how they do things. Um, so uh, it pays attention to take notes. Yeah. Uh, be, be As you're watching Giga Rambles, yeah. you're just uh, taking notes on stuff. Yeah, well, <laughs> so I mean, it helps out a lot um, just to pay attention how other people do things mm -hmm. and figure out what works for you and what doesn't. Um, but yeah, so like painting these large ruins are just gonna be like painting your other miniatures. You just kind of have to tackle it either in pieces mm -hmm. or um, like, Airbrushing, like I will say, every piece of terrain that we have here, uh, terrain just screams for airbrush a yeah. lot of times. It's not necessary uh, for a lot of them, but it really, really helps out. Um, so if hmm. you have an airbrush, it will just, it'll really take that base coating to the next level uh, because you can do like simple transitions with the airbrush. Um, and you don't necessarily have to be good at transitions with terrain uh, because after you like, you wash it down, um, a lot of the the like random spots of like highlights or shadows that will show up if you're kind of like a new to an airbrusher mm -hmm. will just look like wear and tear on a building wall. Oh, so okay, um, interesting. I've so been thinking you, about the airbrushes actually. We yeah. have the Grex line, mm -hmm. which is amazing. The great Cadillac line. Cadillac of airbrushes. Yes, so um, good. So, but yeah, so it, it's not necessary. It just helps out. Um, and if you're planning on painting a lot of terrain. Mm -hmm. um, look into airbrushing. Like if it's something where it's like, oh, hey, I want to build several boards for my home or for my games that I bring up to here for gigabytes. Now, how does um, one go about painting all the MDF boards, hmm. which is this one right here? Yeah. So, so this one starts off and you know, if you've ever handled MDF, it's wood yeah. and then it's, it's like burnt wood. So like when your hands, you're like, oh, that smells yeah. burned. Um, but it's amazing material. Yeah, it is. Um, and MDF is probably going to be one of the most advanced ones that we have uh, because it doesn't necessarily build and paint the same way as um, like the uh, injection plastic or the, mm -hmm. the plastic card ones. 
Um, so this is going to be a little bit more advanced um, for most people. Uh, I would not recommend using super glue. Like you're going to want to either use like something like wood glue okay. or uh, PVA, because uh, a lot of times like the MDF stuff will have enough tension to to hold itself together. It just needs a little extra like push to it. Right. Um, it, MDF is so porous that when you put super glue on it, it generally just seeps into it and oh. doesn't actually like hold very well. Okay. Um, but or, wood glue is is very thick. Yeah, it's so tacky. it's gonna yeah. yeah. So you can take a little bit of wood glue and you actually want to thin it down a little bit to put them together. Would you put airbrush there in that? No, just water. Just water. Okay, yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah, just thin with water. Thin. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like wood glue or like the PVA glue, uh, but most of the time the MDF is going to be. Um, designed to hold itself together through tension alone. Okay. So like just giving it a little extra hold will will save your day um, a lot of times. Uh, so you can use super glue. I've used super glue in the past, but it usually leads to more problems than it does necessarily help. So mm -hmm. um, just something to keep in mind. And wood glue, very cheap at Home Depot or Lowe's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just grab pick a it bottle. Up. Yeah. Um, yep. You can find it at tar like most like Targets or Walmart's right. or whatever too. So. Um, and there's there's different types too. I think I've searched before. Yeah. There's like super extra. I don't think it matters for you. Yeah. EDF. Like you're not putting weight on it. Let's just yeah. say that. So. So um, with the terrain, um, while you're gluing it, um, if the tension doesn't necessarily hold, you're probably going to want to rubber band things to okay. make sure that it sticks together. Right. Um, so it's a little bit more involved, um, but it shouldn't take you. It shouldn't be frustrating. Um, is the big thing. Okay. Like you know, you're not going to be pulling your hair out um, or <laughs> anything like that. It's just. It takes a little bit more thought and it takes a little bit more time than. And like then a the plastic. spray bottles, there you have to get the special kind that bonds to wood, or the most like do everything now. <clears throat> so, so what I recommend if you do MDF is get a primer. Like, don't don't go straight to the like color sprays, right? Um, get a primer, whether it's an airbrush primer or you know, Citadel KS Black or the P3 Black primer, mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, you want a primer that is designed to stick to wood. Uh, you can't just grab a paintbrush and paint over it like you could like the injection plastics. Right. Um, hmm. Once again, it's more porous. You're going to get a, a really weird effect. It'll take multiple coats. It'll, you'll pull your hair out uh, <laughs> at that point. Um, so, and that's not what the hobby's about. No, it's about having no, fun. Yeah, it's about having fun. So, so the big thing is making sure that you have a solid primer um, and making sure that you have a good coat on it. Right. Which is why I like uh, Army Painter and Games Workshop themselves, more so for the woods, uh, because they like to stick really well, mm -hmm. um, and they're like slightly glossy, so um, I don't know what it is about it, but it sticks better. Um, the, the P3 primer is very light and matte, so it's super great for protecting details and all mm -hmm. that, but usually the MDF stuff, like their details are pretty pronounced, Right. so you don't have to worry about like, you know, losing that with just a simple spray. Um, the, yeah, yeah, they're pretty solid there. And once you get it primed, uh, what I will say is for most part, the MDF terrain that we have uh, takes the airbrushing very, very, very well. Really? Um, okay. And the reason why that is is because it has a lot of large, flat surfaces. Games Workshop, with their injection plastics, lose sound? Did we lose sound? Uh, no. Let's check real quick. Okay, cool. She said it came back. Oh, okay. Great. Thanks, Lisa. Um, so, Thank you for checking. So, um, the large flat surfaces, like, when you wash it, it usually just gives it, like, a, a stained effect, which mm -hmm. is fine for the most part. Um, but, like, with an airbrush, you're able to do those transitions and things mm -hmm. like that in it um, that make it look very natural. Um, or if you are someone who can, like, two-brush blend, um, that works really well with it, but it's a little bit more advanced. So that's yeah. Uh, either, I tried that on a Gasland car, yeah. and I, I was like, oh, I'll do it from the corner, or whatever, you know. And I, I watched the uh, Privateer press tutorials. I, yeah. I, I got the two brushes in the hand, just like he said. I put it down. I switched immediately over, and I was like wiggling and everything. Yeah. It turned out like trash. It yeah, well, it's, so, it's practicing thing yeah, yeah. definitely for it, sure. It's a skill, um, 100%. Yeah. But yeah, so for the MDF, a lot of it's going to be. Um, doing your best to do like solid transitions mm -hmm. um, and just because a lot of times like the the amount of detail in it doesn't take to washing super well there's too many large flat panels right. um, that like either want to stay completely flat mm -hmm. like as a like, like just be like okay cool this is just going to be blue like I'm not going to worry about shading it like I will shade around like the edges kind of thing mm -hmm. um, but call it a day there um, so or you're going to want to like heavily weather it 
So like that's I was when just you're thinking gonna, about yeah, that. yeah, like yeah. using pigment powders, um, things that won't necessarily like run or stain like a wash kind mm -hmm. of thing. Like, but like pigment powders, things that um, add texture. To yeah, it. yeah, exactly. So um, you can do that. Like you can even use. Uh, it's actually kind of cool if you want to do like a stucco building. Mm -hmm. You can use some of like GW's like. Uh, texture paint in itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just like dry brush it up to like a white kind of thing if you want to go crazy. Okay. Um, huh. You want to make sure the gravel's fine enough. Like, don't go with like, uh, I think it's like Astro Granite Debris. Yes, it's, like, that's the, the one. Like, super thick, really thick one. one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you want to go for like the finer <laughs> one and do that. But you can totally do it. Um, and it might be a cool effect. But yeah, so like large flat panels. Enamel spray primer for MDF. Enamel primer is where it's at. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Thank you, Jesse. Uh, enamel spray will Works. definitely do it. Like awesome. it will give you a nice hard shell, yeah. a good candy coating. Right. Um, so yeah, it, like there's all these things that can work and I definitely recommend um, when you go to something outside of your wheelhouse, mm -hmm. like injection plastic um, or resin, like MDF, research it. Mm -hmm. Like find a tutorial, find a guy that makes sense to you and explains the steps in a way that you're like, okay, cool. I can now make my own plan of attack by watching this video. Um, so Now as a painter, how do you go about making sure that things pop? Like this one is a fairly simple construction. That's for Infinity and other sort of skirmish style games with smaller structures and whatnot. But let's say I'm painting this house here, which is great. By the way, Tabletop Scenics, yeah, great stuff. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Um, how do I, when I paint that up, how do I make things pop with such broad? Because I'm used to, you know, if you have details, it's easy enough, right? Yeah, so it's actually kind of interesting. Uh, you don't ever want your terrain to take away from the models. Interesting. Okay. So, like, if your centerpiece is the house that you're fighting over, mm -hmm. to me, you're doing it wrong. So, so with huh. terrain, um, what I like to do is make sure that the the details are identifiable, but keep the color palettes a little bit more muted. So, okay. like, don't ever do like bright, like fire truck red, but do like that kind of duller red brick, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, keeping things towards. Uh, neutral tones, um, but that doesn't mean that you can't have contrast, mm -hmm. um, and it also doesn't mean that like you can't make sure the details are noticeable. So uh, when so it'll, it'll come down to color theory. So mm -hmm. um, choosing things that contrast against each other. So like when you were painting like a red brick building, mm -hmm. you want to go with like this kind of like wine red, like like a deep kind of red with like a, maybe like you add a little bit of green to it to kind of dull mm -hmm. down the red itself. Uh -huh. uh, paint that over. And then when you're going to like the trim and things like that, go with a gray that like is obviously like has a tinge of blue to it kind of thing. So you have this okay. like warm color versus this cool color sitting next to each other. So like anyone who's looking at it can say like, I can see all those windowsills and panels absolutely mm -hmm. fine against that red brick. Um, and then from there, you can use like a little bit of metallics on like the fences and things like that, hitting it with like a brown wash or um, kind of like a, once again like a black wash. Or a, give, could you do a gloss like a non oil gloss? Coat yeah, yeah, absolutely. For metal, yeah, uh, for metal, uh, non oil gloss works really, really well because it okay. stays just in the cracks and crevices. Mm. Um, so there is a little bit of issue with like the MDF stuff because okay. it's so flat, right, and plain, like like just a flat plane that the gloss might just sit at the bottom and not do anything. So, so I guess you'd have to do an ink? Yeah, doing inks, um, doing regular non-oil. Once again, it's, it's going to be dependent on how much detail is in that piece of MDF mm -hmm. um, and also uh, the kind of silver that you have as the base coat. Because right. some silvers um, do have like a little bit of texture to them, which will like hold very mm -hmm. well. But a lot of times like there's a, a lot of really good metallics that are just like slick. Yeah. And so the wash will just like to just flow immediately to the <laughs> easiest point. So um, that's actually interesting. I never thought about that. The uh, the uh, the Citadel one, the lead belcher, is like a traditional, yeah. you know, silver. And then there's one I had that's it's enamel. I think it's traditionally for airbrushes. You can do it with brushes, yeah. but it's not acrylic. Yeah. So for one, your brush will like for like 20 minutes, you'll be getting that paint out of the yeah. brush. But it is super slick. Someone actually went up to my model and they said. Was this a metal model? Yeah. So, yeah. No, no, so that there, was paint. Yeah, there's a lot of good, like, metallics out there. Mm -hmm. um, like, especially if you want to, like, branch outside of Citadel. Um, a lot of the airbrush metallics that we have are very, very smooth. Mm -hmm. um, the secret weapon ones, I believe, are some of the better ones out there. Same with the AK, I, I want to say. Um, but, yeah, I started using uh, airbrush silvers as opposed to, like, 
Citadel or Games Workshop stuff just mm -hmm. because um, it has a lot more coverage and it does feel where it has that look of uh, like Metalocity TM mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> look to it. It's from another pain stream. Still, um, that's funny. I yeah. like that. So transitioning to if you are an RPG player, yeah. let's say you're doing a lot of you know Dungeons and Dragons or a Pathfinder, anything like that. This set right here has a ton of Caverns Mines. It's called a Caverns Mine starter set. So if I'm playing, let's say I'm doing it for 12 weeks, is there any way I can do things to keep it fresh looking? Like, oh, the, uh, we went through this mine three times already. Yeah, so the nice thing is uh, the Tablescape Realms, they're going to be resin. Um, and so it's going to go back to the same idea as the, the injection mold plastic. Like, I've painted resin models, John's painted resin models. So many resin models. Like, it, it, it's yes. just... Yeah, Basically. so it's, it w once again, it follows everything that we can do. Mm -hmm. um, or like as we use on miniatures, we can use on here. And so, yes, you can paint this with normal acrylic, uh, you prime it like normal acrylic or, or, or normal models and you go from there. Um, in terms of keeping it fresh, um, usually what I would recommend doing um, is doing like a nice neutral color on it. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you can change it up by adding different scenic elements from other kits. Okay. So like... Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So uh, Bones, Reaper yeah, Bones. Yeah, yeah, Reaper Bones <coughs> and the, uh, the WizKids uh, uh, RPG miniature mm -hmm. lines. They have braziers, carts, chests, um, wall lanterns, uh, sarcophagi. Sarcoph yes. Is it sarcophagi? Okay, uh, cool. Yeah, Nailed it, first try. Bam. No cuts here. Um, so <laughs> so it, it's one of those things where you uh, you can jazz it up through different features and right. itself. Now, I if you want to be crazy, yes, you can totally paint it gray. Uh -huh. And then for next session, come in with these, like, like they show weathering pigments here. Yes. And you can take, like, a green one uh -huh. and start kind of, like, dragging the green in to make it look like it's, like, moss-covered ruins. Yeah. Um, okay. All that sort of stuff. Okay. Um, and it's one of those things where if you don't seal it, you can kind of get rid of it and then right. add like a different pigment powder if you wanted to um, and go from there. I just, you know. <laughs> Joe Gross, P3 Metallics. They're yeah, awesome. they are absolutely uh, good. They're my favorite of the non-airbrush metallics. Um, so, so weathering, you were saying. But yeah, so like back to weathering, like you can absolutely come in and like weather it different ways. Um, and that's one of the cool things about pigment powders is that they don't actually get set in until you use like a pigment fixer. Right. Um, so you could theoretically Ooh. keep adding pigment powders to it or painting over it. Um, it'll take so many coats to paint over it before mm -hmm. you start like losing a lot of details. Right. Because these are all ruins, right? right. Like the cuts in the brick and the stone are very deep and it'll mm -hmm. take like a lot of paint coats to get rid of it. Well, you know, um, you, you got your, your, your priming, base yeah. coat, details, which you don't have to do too many yeah. details if you don't want to. Then you're gonna use like some sort of, uh, you know, uh, non-gloss or a tester's dull coat yeah. or something like that. Make sure you like do multi like two la layers. Yeah, so say? I usually recommend a gloss coat followed by two coats of dull coat. Two coats, okay. Um, that's the best yeah. protection I found in it um, and you're gonna get, mad, you're gonna get it thrown around yeah, you know, yeah you're putting models on it you're scraping it around you're moving it in boxes and, and also like your your hands themselves are going to be one of the biggest things like oils on your hand will rub off paint um, so the the dull coat or the gloss coat and the dull coats will protect against that um, but in terms of like making it look different and keeping mm -hmm. it fresh like you can do different pigments and things like that um, but I really recommend investing in scatter terrain nice. so like you can pick up uh, like we sell it here, like we sell like little tufts of grass mm -hmm. or um, like stone chips and things like that. And it's a great way to add variety to it. Yeah, it'll be a little bit of a cleanup afterwards, but like all you have to do is shake it off on the table and then get like a dustpan, sweep it in, put it in a bag, call it a day. Right. And the next time you go back to that particular dungeon, you can add it, uh, like just throw it on there. And it's, Super it's great. smart. I never thought about that. Yeah. That's so cool. um, this is from the historical community. Okay. So like they're really good about like they'll set up a board and then they'll bring in like a lot of like random greenery and things like that and they'll scatter it around to make the board feel more alive. Super useful um, for like 15 mil games with mm -hmm. super tiny. Yeah. Because um, then well, a small bush can be like a big tree in yeah. that scale. And so huh. it adds variety and then once again like once you get your set pieces of like oh like chests or candles or like let's say this is some crazy um, Aztec dungeon like you can go find those pieces from like Lizardman kits or right. whatever to add to that to, to make it look different. Um, 
so there's all these things that you can do to make your terrain modular and keep things fresh without having to constantly repaint it, um, which I, I personally want to do. Like I'd rather right. like have like a set of props to add to a dungeon to make it look different uh -huh. as opposed to like having to paint it in a different tone or hue or whatever every right. time we go into it. Right. Good um, idea. Wow. Okay. okay. So, and, and there's like, so much terrain to choose from. It's yeah, it, it, we really have like a wide variety of options. Um, like me, my preference, like I like to play usually fantasy games, mm -hmm. and I usually stick to like more um, like jungles and swamps or like Mesoamerican culture style things. So like we have terrain for that. We have terrain for uh, modern day. So like if you're playing a modern day RPG, you can pick up this apartment complex, which is super great. Um, or if you're playing Batman, if you're playing, um, uh, what is it? There's uh, modern warfare. Mm -hmm. um, you can really do whatever. And I really recommend, especially for RPGers, um, it doesn't take a lot to make like a dungeon feel like a dungeon, mm -hmm. um, but it does like ramp it up, especially if you start using some of that scatter terrain. Like right. even if you're drawing on uh, uh, a table, just grabbing a couple of these pieces. Like, hey, this is a really important archway. Right. Let me make sure that this archway is on my mat as I'm explaining it, so people can like, you know, see it, interact with it, and see. It's kind amazing of how the visualizing like helps that mm -hmm. like well you know we have so we're spoiled with so much terrain here but you know bring even a couple of pieces of your own for that for that strict purpose I remember playing and there was a pool and we had to literally go to the center of the pool to grab a staff yeah that ended up being some sort of like you know high level staff thing yeah but like we had this the this the pool mm -hmm. and so the DM was like okay here's the set piece you know work around it now. right it was so cool yeah it, it really helps with immersion um, in your games um, I know we have so many RPGers that come through uh, Gigabytes that are very much like they are veterans. Like it, they can visualize things like that. Uh -huh. You know, like they've been around. They they know the worlds well enough to where you can give them a vague description and they can just see it. Um, but for newer players or people like walking by, checking things out, like it's it's really really cool to see this world that you have built in your head right. out in reality. So I like to train for that. Um, and also, like back to it, like with 40k, um, like the guys at Games Workshop has, have done such a great way of visualizing their world, where mm -hmm. like most people know exactly what a war-torn city looks like in the 40k universe, yeah. or um, you know all that sort of stuff, just because of all the well, books. And it's like where like do that. people live when everything is rubble? You know? Yeah. <laughs> Spaceships is I what I've so. gotten to. Yeah, yeah. underground um, because literally every time you see a battlefield, I get it. You know, if it's a battlefield, it's already blown up. But so I every time you see it, that's pretty close to actually where someone might you know work. Yeah, no, like in my mind, like you can live in a cargo container. That yeah. seems kind of nice. Yeah. Like nice, like may maybe you want to have like a seatbelt in it somewhere <laughs> for when you get like kicked by uh, uh, ogren or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, chaos demon, an orc stompa kind of thing. So it's like, <laughs> but. But besides that, I feel like a cargo crate's yeah. kind of safe in the 40k universe. In the 41st millennium. Yeah. <laughs> Where did people live? Yeah. These are important questions to think about, y'all. Yeah. You know, um, this fills out the lore. Speaking of lore, Wrath and Glory coming out. Yeah, so... That's going to be awesome. And once again, it's going to be great, because uh, Wrath and Glory, like, we already have the character miniatures. Yes. Um, oh, dude, But man. now we're getting more and more terrain for it. Uh -huh. um, between Necromunda, Kill Team, regular 40k, like, you should be able to play Wrath and Glory, like... I, I can't wait to see someone play Wrath and Glory on one of our six by fours, where yep. they just kind of like set up a session to be uh -huh. on that six by four. I was just thinking day. about yeah. that. We have enough terrain here that you could probably run an entire campaign on different planets. Exactly. And be okay. Yeah. So um, that's a really exciting game coming out because, uh, like, I'm into 40k because I love the fluff. Right. And I want to experience that more. Um, like, I love our narrative campaigns. Uh -huh. I love all that sort of stuff. But like Wrath and Glory, like. You can just get into it, like mm -hmm. get into that world, um, and it's much more accessible to me. Like I like their new system a lot more than the old ones. Excuse me. I think it's always smart when you're making an RPG, um, especially if you're basing it off of another property. Mm -hmm. um, keep keep the mechanics in a similar vein in itself. Right. So like Wrath and Glory is now a D6 system instead of like a D10 system. Really? So right. you as a 40k player, you're going to have already this handful of D6s. Does it have, like, you're doing things on three ups or four ups? Yeah, or? so, like, I think successes, um, like, so let's say you have a, a skill check, like, like, you're looking for a seven on a skill check. Okay. Uh, but you have 
uh, a 10 skill in engineering. Okay. So like it's a engineering check of seven. So you get to roll 10 dice and you'll be looking for seven four ups. Okay. And I believe sixes count as like two. Ooh, so crits. like okay. yeah, yeah. So um, very neat. Okay, that's yeah. interesting. So so it keeps the feel of throwing a bunch of dice. Exactly. Even with a single character. Yeah. So wow. so once again, it keeps like you know you as a forty k player, everything that you need to play in the forty k RPG you already have. Right. Which I think is great. Or once again, if you're a Wrath and Glory player and you're like, oh maybe I'll check out forty k. I don't know. I don't have to buy a lot more. Oh my god, I have everything <laughs> I need. You know. And now so, that everyone's gotten kill teams. Yeah. That just means that. Yeah, so so it's really cool, and I like systems that that do that. Um, Iron Kingdoms is another big one, mm -hmm. like the War Machine and Horse one. They follow the same like mechanics as their their tabletop game as the RPG. So it's like a two D six system. So it's like okay, cool. Um, same with the Infinity RPG. Like you right. know, if you're playing the Infinity RPG, you're going to have basically everything that you need to play Infinity, anyways. So, gotcha. So gotcha. it's really smart on the the company's parts to let people kind of cross mm. back and forth. Um, so good, so good. So I and utilizing the terrain is going to be a huge part yeah. of it, I think, because I feel like Wrath and Glory will be one of those things that, similar to how Kill Team is bringing people into a new realm. A lot of people, I know for me, I do not own a single piece of terrain. Yeah. But now, with Kill Team, I will now own enough that I can at least fill out, like, two Kill Team boards. Mm -hmm. But eventually, I'll have enough for a full 4x6, yeah. you know. Um, and to me, being able to bring it in... Yeah. Uh, add in some of the amazing terrain Absolutely. that we have here at the store. Yeah, you know, um, really keep it fresh. And it's smart, like the Kill Team set, like including terrain because mm -hmm. they really want Kill Team to be the like kitchen table version yes. of 40k. And boy, is it awesome! Yeah, oh, so, so good. It, it's a really solid system, but it also means like, let's say I'm visiting John uh, when he's back in Ohio and mm -hmm. we want to play Kill Team. Be like, okay, great, let's play Kill Team. Uh, if they didn't have the terrain in there, we'd be like, oh, I guess we got to go to a store, right. or we got to do that thing where we use like books and salt shakers and all that sort of stuff to maneuver <laughs> And Games around. Workshop stores don't have very great hours, so yeah. it's like, oh, it's 8 yeah. o'clock, it's closed. But with that Kill Team box, or, or any of the, like, the expansions that come out, uh -huh. they all come with terrain. So that means like, oh, hey, we already have this here. Right. Like, it doesn't need to be painted much more than it comes out of the box with. Um, but we can play that nice thematic game, and we don't have to worry necessarily about like running to our local shop at a, mm -hmm. you know nine fifty five right before they close to buy. Like, and it a piece really of does plan a coffee table, which is yeah. amazing to me. And yeah. you don't need a whole bunch of the extra stuff. So if you literally only have a small like I, I we have yeah. a small coffee table, you can sit there and you're sitting on the floor and you can play it. Yeah. And you have enough a little extra space there. Because the way that this setup is like 22 by 30, yeah, right? Yeah, 22 by 30 or so 2 a, by 2. Right, so a traditional yeah. coffee table has a little bit extra on the ends. You just stick your stuff there yeah, on the ends. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so it was really well thought out mm -hmm. by Games Workshop, and um, it seems like a lot of games are, are moving over to that too. Um, I was just mm -hmm. playing Monster Apocalypse that yeah. I got from um, Gen Con uh, yesterday. What a week, the, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but once again, that's the, the map itself is around that like 20 by 30 kind of range. And so we got to play it on just like a random table because all the tables were filled last night, like right. all the high tops. So we just played it on a random table here at Gigabyte, so we had plenty of room to play. Uh -huh. um, and also it really, the Monpok encourages terrain because mm -hmm. you get to interact with it, you're giant monsters, and so that you gotta have buildings to destroy. Um, so and it's great. It's a gridded system. Mm -hmm. Grid system you, like dust. The starter box comes with these little buildings. How many does it come with? Six buildings. Six, right? Yeah. So and there's so, cool little skyscrapers. Yeah. Um, so it's one of those things where it encourages like terrain and interaction. Mm -hmm. Where uh, a lot of these games are moving towards that because companies are like, all right, we need to make sure our games look pretty right. to outsiders. How do we do this? We got it. Make terrain important. Uh -huh. Like, like give terrain rules. You know, right. like outside of just like covering things like that, and, uh -huh. and you'll be set. So it's good. So as an uh, industry wise, you know, as a retailer, we're always looking at trends and whatnot. So we we've had for a long time, thirty years or so of uh, of forty uh, k, and it's always big battles, right? Yeah. And then several years ago, it was a big trend toward skirmish games. But now we're seeing another kind of skirmish resurgence where yeah. it's not like it's trying to take away. Cause we talk about vampirism all the time, right? right. I think people are trying to take from one thing or the other. It's not going to take away from the 40k experience no. playing something like Kill Team because I still have the desire to have a huge army and yeah. throw it at somebody. Um, I just happen to also be able to incorporate this terrain into my big battles right. now, yeah. which is for me is huge. Yeah, it's really important to know, like with Kill Team, if you guys are not experienced with it, it 
has enough of the 40k rules to where if you play 40k it's familiar but it has enough different rules to provide you a different experience mm -hmm. to it you're not just playing with a squad of 40k guys you're not playing like right. a hundred point game of 40k you know like it is its own functional game that is a little bit more in depth than mm -hmm. like on a model to model basis than uh, a 2000 point of 40k where right. it's not necessarily model to model but it's like an army yeah. you know um kind of thing so because our scale will all, you're always going to have apocalypse games mm -hmm. and if you haven't played an apocalypse game you need to play it at least once yes it please. is amazing you fill up three or four tables and yeah. you just there's there's a whole lot going on it's yeah. amazing uh let us know in advance if you want to do an apocalypse yeah. game we'll reserve some tables for you guys yep. we'll we'll make sure you get some cool terrain uh on it and throw down um uh every once in a while we have the 40k at 40k yeah, where yeah. it's an apocalypse game of twenty thousand points a piece, so it's forty thousand points on the board. Some players um, have twenty thousand in one army. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, it, I it, love it. it. It blows me away, but uh, I also, I mean, I too love it. Like it's really cool. So. I saw one a couple of months ago. It was fifteen thousand points of IG. And mm. It was literally like two or three of these four by sixes yeah. filled up. Good old. I think it was on Bellasols. Yeah, Either that are spiky bits. We have, we have 15 minutes. We need to talk about releases because A, yeah. Cotter's out. Yes. And if you haven't seen these dudes, oh my gosh. Yeah, so they, they, are, they are the religious zealots of the uh, Necromunda universe uh, or the 40K universe. So um, they're very different from a lot of the other gangs because their motivation is vastly different than, right. than the other guys. Um, so if you like candles, which is a plus check for me. If you like religious fanaticism, uh, so if you're a fan of the Emperor, that should be a check for you. Uh, plus, uh, like if you like painting a lot of cloth and drapery mm -hmm. and things like that, uh, they're absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and you can build them in multiple different ways. You know, they have, it, it's it's kind of a cool mix. They're like human skaven. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, uh, well, except for the rat skins who are human skaven. Right, right. Um, that are coming out later. But yeah, like they have a lot of the same elements. Like, you know, they 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 look like post-apocalyptic monks. Right. You know, so uh, it, like these are like the the monks with like the shaved head in the uh -huh. middle on, on the side, not like the kung fu monks. Right, right. Um, but yeah, so like lots of drapery, lots of cloth, candles, um, fire, plenty of fire. Yeah, exploding uh, crossbows. Exactly, jewelry bits, all that sort of stuff. So they're not high tech. They just they 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 literally scavenge, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because you know, the, the emperor will provide <laughs> um, with whatever I murder from my my enemies. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's a lot of cobbled together uh, pieces, and so they have this really kind of like low-tech look to it like they they're the complete opposite of vansar so like where goliath and escher are kind of uh foils of each other i would think mm -hmm. kador and vansar are yeah. foils of each other yep. where like orlock is right now just futuristic biker gang yeah look. Yep. so like to me like uh orlock is like the in the middle like that's what i would expect a like futuristic gang to look like yes it's like orlocks yep um and so from there, like everyone else, kind of they like, still occasionally shower. They look yeah. fairly clean. Yeah, and they all have they all ship you. They'll no problem. Mm -hmm. and they all got guns, which is you know appropriate. But yeah, so these Cotor guys, like it sounds really weird, but they would also make great chaos cultists, which is the yes. exact opposite of what they would probably ever want to be in you, actual life. I'm thinking you could put chaos transfers. Oh yeah, um, on the shoulders. Maybe get rid of the candles because I feel like the candles don't. Trans, there's no like heretic stuff that does candles, right? Um, I, I could think you could get away with with Zinch. Zinch does candles. No, yeah, yeah, I mean why not? Yeah. Like Zinch does fire. Fire, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so like you paint the f candle flame blue or pink. I think you're you're golden. Oh, okay. Um, I see. But yeah, yeah you, you can get rid that. of the candles. But like, yeah, usually corrupted you can just, cotter. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, so they make great chaos uh, cultists as well. So anyone who's looking for like new cultists or different things to add, like. Take a look at Cotor because it, it won't take much. It'll usually just be like the paint job. Yep. And like, yeah, chaos transfers. Like, slap a, a you know, seven point star or eight point star or whatever on him. A little green skin thing on the head, make it a hunchback. Yeah, exactly. All it's, kinds of it's, stuff. it's fine. Um, so, yeah, and this works really good, especially for people that don't have like necessarily that like cultist slot filled. Mm -hmm. Like, um, so not Thousand Suns, not Nurgle, but if you're looking for cultists for like. Um, Alpha Legion right. or whatever, like these guys, I think can fit right in. And um, the cultists are, I think there's seven total sculpts for the cultists. There's, yeah. there's the traditional five, and then there's like the two leader types. Mm -hmm. There's the one with the axe and the one with the shotgun. 
And if you ha if you're running a hundred of them, yeah. you kind of want some variety. So yeah. it helps maybe to have a Cotter gang and say, okay, yeah, just mix these them in. These ten dudes are a little bit different. Yeah, it, it, I mean, especially if you mix them in, like no yep. one's going to be like that guy's not a cultist. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to kind of go, oh boy. Yeah. So yeah, like the the Cotter kit's really cool. Like they have a wide variety of weapons. They have Molotov cocktails. They have flails. They have crossbows. There's with, a mace uh, in here. No, yeah. it's a flail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, buzzsaw hatchet blade. Like it's all really cool stuff. Um, it's great. And for 40 bucks for 10 of those guys, it's a steal, um, personally. They put a lot of effort in these new designs. Mm -hmm. Like, they're, the design for all of these new sculpts for GW are on point, every single one. Yeah, never never doubt GW when it comes to, like, making a solid miniature. They yep. will blow you away every time. I am excited for orcs, because I've been waiting for that orc codex. Yeah, we should see some for orc so stuff in the next couple weeks uh -huh. um, with, um, I want to say there's, like, a Warhammer event, either... This weekend or next weekend? So uh, it's the Nova opens at the end of the month. Yeah, so I think we, I think there's something in England okay. before then. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like we should see stuff relatively soon. Um, in terms, of, like you know, every once in a while, like every quarter they do like here's a preview of the upcoming uh -huh. quarter. So we should see Space Wolves, Orcs. Um, it's been hinted to me through channels of my own that I talk with people that it's end of August, early September, supposed to be when it is. You know, they, they yeah. keep these things in a wrap fairly well. But uh, So, I mean, just keep an eye out. We will we will let you guys know as soon as we see anything. Um, but usually as soon as you guys know, we know kind of thing. So Yeah, Joe Grove says, like, uh, Kill Team allows more time to really paint in details because you're not worried about getting an entire army painted. Mm -hmm. And that's I think that's part of... Yeah, the, the the future of like your year in a tabletop, right? So if you were to say from January to January, or school year to school year, August to August, you, you're going to have super busy times right at the start of the school semester, which is now, right? Yeah. A lot of folks are busy, and then you're going to slow down a little bit in the, some of the activities you don't haven't started up yet, and then you're going to have the Christmas, which is crazy, a lot of family time for a lot of folks, and then after January, it's another period where you can get a lot of hobby stuff done. So to be able to plan out your your hobbying and say, I'm going to start off and just get my five or six Primaris Marines like yeah. for me. I have enough time to finish those in like two months, which is great. Now, do I want to paint an entire Primaris army? I don't have time for that. No. But and for six dudes, I, I have time for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'll take like a weekend maybe if you're putting a lot of effort into it. So, mm -hmm. um, And I had the Sons of the Phoenix, which is all white to start off with. Oh, so cool. Yeah. I don't know if that was the smartest choice if I wanted speed, because the moment you mess up, I literally was literally painting it, and I had yeah. gold, and then I literally just did one brush wrong, and now he has a huge gold streak across his shoulder, which is the biggest part of it. And I went, yeah, that happened. Just make him your captain. It's yeah. Fine. yeah. <laughs> make a little give, arrow, right? Give, give it a little chevron yep. pattern. It's fine. <laughs> um, so, yeah, planning ahead, um, and it's like one of those things where, like, with Kill Team and all that, like, so you get to paint up your, your kill team. You get to paint up your squad. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, cool, that was quicker than I thought. What am I going to do now? It's like, terrain. Terrain. So, um, awesome. It's, or, you know, buy another box and slowly build up kind of thing. It's it's really interesting to see um, the, the progression of the game and also, like, the time involved in each game. Mm -hmm. um, they're trying to... Most games themselves are trying to... They're figuring out how much free time people actually have, right? Right, and so they're they're trying to plan accordingly for it. So um, you're seeing a lot more smaller games come out that also focus on terrain, because mm -hmm. like terrain, like we we're talking about earlier, a lot of times like you can get a color, like a like prime it and then get like a color spray, spray it, come and do a little details. It's it's 100 percent playable, go. yeah. Right. Um, and so so that doesn't take much time your squads don't take that much time and then you just get to get into it mm -hmm. um, and then when you do find yourself getting time for you know hobbying again you can pick up either another piece of train or another squad of dudes yeah. so um, they're being really mm -hmm. smart with not only the amount of money that you put into it mm -hmm. but like also your hobby investment right. um, every once in a while they're going to come out with this like giant kit for those hobbyists that are going to love it like Adeptus Titanicus mm -hmm. which if you pick up that box set just for yourself, you are going to be painting two Warlord Titans, six Imperial Knights, uh -huh. and a boat ton of terrain. And um, those little knights are so detailed. Yeah. So, I saw it at Gen Con. So detailed. Um, 
so once again, like it's a great hobby project. Mm -hmm. um, you can make it look so gorgeous. Um, but also with those knights and the Warlord Titans, you can get away with a lot because the detail is so shrunk down that you hit it with that silver rattle can and hit it with a good wash. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much texture and detail on it, the wash is going to find its home really right. easily. And then you can come in and paint the panels. Yes. And then you're like, all right, cool, I did it. Like, it's done, let's play. Um, and no one's going to be the wiser that, right. you know, you did uh, a quick table-ready paint job. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah. Yeah, Titanic is interesting. So $290. $290. I know that it was A lot making, of people go, oh, yeah, my God. Shock. There's only 1,000 in the world yeah. that they're making for the Grand Master Edition. Right, so it's not one of these games that they know is going to be super popular, like Kill yeah. Team. If they thought that it was going to be super popular, they literally wouldn't say we only have a thousand copies. Yeah, like um, this is a niche game for people who really love that experience, which I like that experience. Yeah, we only have fifty copies for us coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, we're taking pre-orders. Uh, you get a bonus if you prepay. I think through today, mm -hmm. um, which is really good. Um, so if you're interested in it, uh, please contact us. Ask the questions you need to ask. Yes to uh, say, yes, this is for me. Because um, if it's for you, you're going to absolutely love yeah, it. Yeah. It, Phenomenal. The, the 290 price tag, you're going to be like, oh my god, it's so expensive. But you're getting about $200 worth of additional product in it. So it's like 50% off of all the stuff anyways. So And I did some of the math as well. So you have to account for all of these different factors in the production. They have designing, yeah. they got to pay the people to actually do the CAD art, they have mm -hmm. to do all the sculpts, they yeah. have to do all this stuff not terribly a lot of profit compared to something like Kill Team. Yeah. They don't get a lot out of that sort of niche, niche Correct. game. Correct, yeah. So, and also, like, when you look at the price point, like, the Warlord Titan sells for 110. Uh -huh. It's about the size of an Imperial Knight. Yes. Already, which sells for 150-ish mm -hmm. about now. Uh, so that's already a good deal. You're getting three Imperial Knights for $35, which is, to me, madness. I thought it was going to be 60 bucks at yes. minimum for three, if not more. Um, so... The price point's already good on this, and then the box set itself is such a good deal. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're on the fence, like I said, contact us, yes. ask the questions. Whatever um, you need to know. Yeah, we, we, will, we will provide you as much information as possible. Mm -hmm. um, if you are interested at all, don't miss out on this opportunity, because right. it's, it's one and done. Yes, because um, they're only going to get more in 2019. Yes. And it's probably going to be like mid-2019, I would yeah. say. And so, so get on this now while you can. Mm -hmm. um, and our pre-orders are, like, we're going through our pre-orders very quickly. Yes. Um, so so don't be left out is basically what I'm getting That's the at. one. <laughs> you can buy stuff individually, but like I said, you'll be spending 200 extra dollars to right. get everything by itself anyway. So, mm -hmm. And the models are so good. Oh, I saw them at Gen Con. I was completely, at first I was taken aback because I thought that it was some sort of new Primaris. And yeah. I, it took me a second. I thought, oh, that's actually the, the new Titanicus stuff. Yeah. Looks incredible. Yeah, so, like, the Imperial Knights themselves, they're... They're a little bit shorter than, like, you know, a Redemptor Dread. They're... But bigger than... A little bit bigger than Inceptors, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, but bigger than a Primaris, yes. you know, so... Uh -huh. So they're good... Because they're just yeah, big things. They're, they're stout. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's coming out soon. We'll have a box here for mm -hmm. preview soon, so you guys can come in take a look at the rules. Um, it's a great way to experience a different age and a different style of 40K. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, just check it out and do all that sort of stuff. I think cool. it's... A couple more minutes left. Any other big new releases coming out? Uh, so Monster Apocalypse. Yes. That's the one that's coming out. It's coming out uh, mid to late September. We will have demo kits here ready and available for, mm -hmm. to show off for folks. Um, please get your pre-orders in. Uh, we have a limited amount of pre-orders coming in. Uh, we already have taken some pre-orders. Uh, so we're running through that. And if we need to get more in, uh, we will do so. Uh, so the miniature is great. Uh, I can't really explain to you how fun the game's been for me because it, yes. it's been an absolute blast. The few games I've played, um, but that's coming out uh, mid to late September. Um, the models are solid. Yeah, um, they're, they're, I think they're resin. Yeah, it's all yeah, it's one hundred percent resin, mm -hmm. um, which is really good. Um, the starter set is your big dude, and then four, five, five little guys. Yeah. So Plus, they, they're tanks for the of the protectorate, yeah. Or they're little beetle things. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. They're called beetles. Yeah, well, they're, they're, they're destructomites and uh, belchers and all yeah. that sort of good stuff. Uh, so yeah, it, that's coming out soon. Um, so if you're interested, we do have demos. I will run demo games mm -hmm. for you. I will let you see and experience how much fun the game can be, uh, destroying a city block. Um, so fun. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we should probably talk about the events that are coming up this weekend because yes. it's going to be slammed. Oh my gosh, uh, yes. This weekend's we Warzone Gigabytes. Mm -hmm. um, 
we have 64 people registered coming in for the tournament. Um, if you guys don't know, we will be very packed. Uh, expect... Uh, That's 32 high tops. Yeah. So expect... Uh, Expect to be busy here in the store. Um, plan for that, please. Uh, if you have questions about spacing availability and all that, call the store yep. or message us through Facebook. We will we will let you know what's going on. I would say 100% call if you can, just because it's going to be so busy yeah. that the Facebook ch- messages might not be checked right away. Correct. So if you want an answer like right away, like, hey, yeah. I'm, I'm going to come down in five minutes. Yeah. Is, so, is it you have space for me? So basically... Um, it runs both days. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll be a very large event. There'll be a lot of coverage. John's mm-hmm. here specifically for it yep. to to do video, to do coverage. Um, so expect a lot from our media um, over the next two days. Now, uh, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but this would be like the biggest in-store tournament. For 40K. For 40K. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's, I mean, Yeah, for the, for the amount of space that we're taking, yes. all these four by sixes. I think this is possibly the biggest in the U.S.? For an uh, in-store. For, for in-store, store, probably. I don't Not think, a, a I don't think a lot of stores could fit 64 40K players in. Yeah. Um, so please, um, yeah, Gigabytes. it's super exciting. I can't wait so to see cool. how it plays out. Um, I've been looking forward to this uh, and the madness uh, that it will be. Um, <laughs> it's going to be great. So it, it'll be a big, uh, a big event. Um, and then also on top of that, we have Commander. 2018, yeah. uh-huh. uh, releasing this Saturday. We're having a big event at 7 o'clock on Saturday, releasing all the new decks, getting all that stuff out. Um, it'll be really good. And then uh, finally on Sunday, we have our Skirmish Supremacy Sunday. Uh-huh. So um, all the Skirmish guys should be here. Uh, and then we also have our War Machine and Hordes Journeyman League uh, coming out uh, that uh, or starting that Sunday. Right. Uh, so the War Machine and Hordes Journeyman League, you can come in and play on Sunday, um, or you can sign up and uh, schedule matches later outside of that. So it's And Journeyman you. League is kind of an escalation league. Correct, So it yeah. starts off small, you get a battle group box, mm-hmm. and then you kind of build on top of it. Absolutely. So yeah, it's a really great way to get into the game mm-hmm. um, or start a new faction. Um, I'll be starting my new faction, which is going to be uh, Kador. Nice. Um, so okay. I'm, I'm. Did have they released new Mana Wars yet? Yeah, yeah. So the Mana Wars released in June. Okay. So like all the new Mana War stuff came out. Um, I'll be playing so cool something other than Gators for the first time in probably eight years. So it's it's a really big event or deal. What? Um, so this is great. Yeah. Wow. Um, it's really Times good. are changing. Uh, and I'm really excited to kind of grow with it through mm-hmm. the German League and play something a little new, something a little different. See how I like it. Um, probably go back to Gators at the end of it, but but you know I want to see see what's up in another faction, and I'm excited to see what other people are doing. I wonder if you could put Gator heads on like the Man of Wars. Oh, 100 percent can. Yeah, I've looked into it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm surprised you don't play more. Is it Slanesh that has all the lizards and stuff like that? In uh, no Daughters of Cain. Yeah, Daughters, Daughters of Cain. Do you play Daughters of Cain? Um, in Sigmar? No. So, but why? The only reason why is because I already have my order faction, which is lizard men. Right. So they're already like proper. Yeah, lizards. I was okay. hoping Daughters of Cain would be like destruction. Right. So um, you can have different. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. I could have like my order army, my chaos army, my destruction army, kind of thing. And all be lizards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but unfortunately, Daughters of Cain are part of order, and they don't necessarily play well with lizards. Right. They can't ally together. Right. So as much as I love those models, I might eventually get them, uh, even if it's just for a painting kind of thing. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the thing. So hmm. you know, very cool. Um, but oh, yeah, it's twelve. Yeah, it's we twelve. Going. We got people coming in. Talking um, for an hour. I love it. So thank you guys for coming in yes. and watching the stream. Um, we'll be here all weekend. Uh, like I said, if you have questions about Adeptus Titanicus mm-hmm. or the madness that's going on between Warzone, uh, Commander twenty eighteen. Uh, or the Journeyman League all starting this weekend, please message us uh, and talk to us. Uh, yep. We will be happy to provide you with whatever information we can. Yep, and then we'll post into our group, uh, Gigabytes Tabletop Gaming Group, yeah. uh, when we have space available. So toward the midday is when it tends yeah. to kind of free up a little bit. Uh, so we'll have an extra table here or there, and we'll tell you. If it's yeah. completely packed, we'll make sure to we'll make sure to say it. Yeah. Um, but Ta- it, no matter what, just check beforehand before you come, because there's probably going to be space yeah. for you. Hashtag Table Watch 2018. Uh-huh. uh-huh. So, so oh, we, oh, on our Discord. You can yes. join our Discord. Yeah. Um, and uh, if you're in the Discord, then I'll post there. Yeah. So we will uh, keep as much information flowing as we can. So we look forward to seeing everyone out here this weekend. Yeah. It will be a fun, jam-packed weekend. Uh, so until then... We'll see you next time. Goodbye, Bye, y'all. Goodbye now. Goodbye. Right. Goodbye. Give me a second.
We got someone watching on YouTube. That's great. Oh my god. And then let's end this one in live video. And in. Right. Yeah. And this one ends broadcast. Yeah. Oh. Stop the